characters um, is one of the conventions of comics that I am excited to use and to, to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question. Yes, that's so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this. And also, um, can you, I saw something on Safaria, right? Right at the beginning. Yeah. So that's one of the places where you can find um, the comics that I make. Um, and I'm not sure if this was uh, audible earlier, and I, I apologize for the technical difficulties and thank you for bearing with me. Um, but in addition to publishing my work, um, on let's say in my portfolio or on Instagram, I like to have my work within the library of Safaria so that it can be connected to other texts. And so, oh, thank you, Alona, appreciate it very much. Um, so when you are studying a text, in addition to seeing the commentary that are from traditional commentators, Rashi, uh, Ramban, Rambam, you can also see the more contemporary works. And I, I, I think it's exciting to me to think about what does commentary look like when it's not only written, but when it's also in this visual format as well. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Say thank you to Esti for that. Um, you can find out more information over here on the on esti.ellis.com and then also find out more about the Chavruta um, experience with uh, the Amen Institute and, and review that Chavruta debrief through the articulation. So thank you so much. We're going to go through the slides and move on to the next Chavruta that Rabbi Jason Herman had, and that's with Deborah Band. Um, and would you like me to read anything no, no. about a biography. I'm. I'm just. I'm telling people to go and look at the website, so we have more time to actually look at your artwork. Oh, sure. That's fine. That's okay. fine. I mean, if you want to do a bio or something, that that that's okay too. But um, whatever you think works best. Okay. If if there is something important, you, I I would say just mention it afterwards, and and I would love to just sure. get into your your work that we can. That's great. Do. Lovely. That's wonderful. It's, it's really great to be here this afternoon. I'm, I'm so grateful to Devere and to you for organizing this. And it's been, um, it's been a, 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 it was a real treat to have the occasion to do a deep dive into Vayachi. It's, it's been very exciting. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the painting that's resulted from this collaboration. Um, I should say Rabbi Herman wrote a wonderful Debar Torah. Um, he and I tended to focus focus on rather different things. And unfortunately, given the vagaries of software, I've been unable to pull up my copy of his Dvar Torah because I was going to um I was going to pull some ideas from it. But I'm not at home right now. I didn't have access to my paper copies and Microsoft Word decided not to accept that format anymore. Anyhow, um so let me let me tell you a little bit about this painting. Um, much of my work, um, which is apart from hundreds of Ketubot and several illuminated books of biblical text, um, each of which has been a collaboration with major scholars. Um, they all begin with extensive study of, of the academic Bible studies and the Midrash, lots of rabbinics. And for 30 years, I've been working on building a Jewish visual symbolic vocabulary to express abstract values um, with images drawn a lot for, for Midrash. I haunt archaeological museums, um, in particular the Israel Museum and the British Museum, for artifacts of the biblical era and other and, and many other periods of Jewish history. Um, and these can embody the abstract ideas and values that are raised in the biblical text. Um, Jewish arts have always been a little thin on this, um, largely, I think, because we've had such a high degree of literacy and so didn't need to learn our religion through pictures. But in this very visual internet era, I think visual symbolism has a, a really dramatically increased importance. And I've brought all of this to bear on this interpretation of, of Vayachi. Now, um, the motion in gray sheet is something that's just amazing to me. Um, the book begins with creation of all matter and gradually narrows its focus down to one family and then one man, Yosef, 
uh, and preparing us to burst into the broadening out of our tale with the creation of the whole nation of Israel, not one family at the beginning of Shemot. Um, and Vayechi is the turning point of this motion. Um, and it's, it's really fascinating in that. Um, to me, it's striking that Yaakov's evaluation and prophecy, we, we talk about it being his blessings. They're not so much blessings if you read them. They're, they're, they're clear-minded, sharp evaluations um, and prophecies about his son. And um, they're offered here, not just his simple love and ambitions for them, but a clear-eyed, sharp evaluation of them as men, ranging from the ruthless to the euphoric. Um, the, the focus on justice especially strikes me. And indeed, this aspect caught the attention of much rabbinic discussion in Breshit Rabbah, um, which is the main collection of, of Midrash on, on Breshit. Uh, in this painting, um, following the lead of the Midrash, I interpret the Parsha's very subtle ideas of justice and judgment um, and our ability to course correct or not. Um, following our mistakes. Micrography presenting the entire text of Vayechi winds and flows through the painting, and it flows uh, because, of course, one of the most frequent metaphors um, in all of Tanakh compares Torah to flowing water. Um, and beginning at the top, you can, um, beginning at the top, we, uh, we see Kabbalistic ideas of God's creation of all matter, um, with God um, hidden from the material world by a firmament of cloud. I've encountered these ideas in um, the classical Kabbalistic writings of Meir Ibn Gabai. I'm, I'm presently working with Art Green and the astrophysicist Howard Smith on a book of Ibn Gabai's analysis of, of um, the mechanics, the mystical mechanics of creation. Um, and below the, below the clouds, we see, um, we see a scale uh, heading down into, into the material world. Um, uh, let's see, um, where am I? Yeah, and, and the scale represents Jacob's, um, J so, I'm getting myself confused here. Um, the The scale protrudes down into the into the material world, and we see on it the the judgment of the sons, um, Yaakov's judgment of the sons. Um, the we have Jacob's evaluation of his sons' characters, their sin and their promise. And this is the complexity of the future nation of Israel. That will take and that will flow into the future and become us. The scales balance offers the blessing, may you be like Ephraim and Menashe, with which parents now bless their sons. Um, the swinging pans hold imagery of the son's deeds and Yaakov's clear eye judgment. Sin is at the left, which is the Kabbalistic side of God's harsher attributes, outweighed by uh, goodness at the right the side of God's gentler attributes. Notably, the Lion of Judah, the tribe that will one day lead all Israel, looks back from the side of good as Yehuda remembers his past, his past abuse of his daughter-in-law Tamar. And he's now changed his course so dramatically, done such tshuva that Yaakov, as he dies, knows that it will be this son's descendants who will merit the leadership of the people. Um, the micrography ends at the bottom, you can see, with the word chazak, be strong, whose painted letters anticipate the temple's golden menorah. You can only see it in small parts there. Um, it's, still, it's still obscured. Um, and this menorah, of course, is the one that Yaakov's distant progeny will one day light in the temple. Now, this is a fun piece here. Um, you can see that palmette border that goes around the painting. Uh, this is adapted from a little ivory furniture plaque in the Israel Museum that is exactly contemporary with the building of Solomon's temple. And it was found in the remains of a palace 
probably about 50 miles away from Jerusalem. Uh, palmette designs, if you, if you think back to, to Malachim, to kings, um, palmette designs figure among the decorations described for Solomon's temple in, 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 in Malachim kings, um, in chronicles. And although there are hundreds of these patterns around the Mediterranean for 2000 years, there's strong art historical reasoning to think that it's this particular pattern that was found so close to Jerusalem that's contemporaneous with the building of the temple that may be very close to the one used by Solomon's designers. And for many years, I've used this motif to prefigure the temple, which was of course the ancient focus of divine energy on earth and to which the heritage and value of justice that Parsha Vayechi brings to us leads. So there we are. I'll be happy to take questions. Incredible, so detailed. So the mycography, the entire Parsha that's outlined here is fabulous. Yeah. And I got it all in. Incredible. <laughs> So um, now I, sh I should have said also that you can see the little uh, plant things on either side of the word chazak at the bottom. This is, these are classical Egyptian presentations of papyrus plants. And of course, papyrus is what uh, Moshe would have learned to write on. Um, this was the paper of the day. So and it also needs water to grow it. So it's a rush that grows at the edge of water at the edge of the Nile. Gorgeous. Um, okay. Any questions from from our group of listeners? Amazing. Beth, it's. I think it's amazing. It's beautiful, and I'm and so detailed. I'm. I'm really just curious how long it took you to uh, get it done. <laughs> Uh, I'm used to saying the little brownies actually come and do my work at night. And of course, it takes no time at all. Um, I think I was probably working on this. My guess was probably about 10 days. It's the micrography that took um, a long, long time. So um, that's and I I was doing this in the middle of two book projects, so didn't have a whole lot of time to waste. So. Uh, yeah, but it was it was a treat to do this. This is not a parsha that I had really explored in great depth before, and it's it's just so rich. I mean, these values of of justice are both personally uh, the notions of how we do tshuva um, and the value of justice and honesty and clear minded evaluation of even the people we love is just so critical in in our world, both privately and publicly. Now, it was. It was great to have the chance to explore this. What a, what a wonderful, wonderful explanation and what a glorious That's, piece. Thank, thank you. you. I was wondering, the, the fox there, what does the fox represent? Uh, was, it Shim, was it Shimon or Levi? I forget who the fox is. I mean, there's something there for each of the tribes. Um, I honestly forget offhand. But uh, I can recognize the lion is there, the snake is there, um, Yehuda um, leaning over a bed with a woman in it is there. Sorry. I thought perhaps the snake was the Garden of Eden. Uh, no, it was associated with one particular with so one particular done. tribe, those are all images that, those are all images that Yaakov associates. Oh yeah, Don is the snake. Oh. Yaakov describes Don as the snake. Um, but yeah, I worked expressly because so many of them are just so unexpected, so unexpected. And I'm not, I'm not seeing the wolf quickly. But what's um, interesting, I, I've seen the depictions of the different tribes on stained glass windows in synagogues course, before. Sure. That's a very, you know, you were talking about archaeology and what do you find? And um, I've never seen them grouped together like this. 
like right. all the symbols uh, in kind of like one soup and and what would it have meant for certain um brothers to have received a negative uh blessing let's just call it and yeah. uh, right and it's and group together like what does that create in terms of family dynamics and so yeah, I mean, there is nothing there. There is. Yes. And I, I can certainly make prints of this. So thank you for that. Thank you for that con comment. Just drop, drop me a note. Um, the um, it's, you know, we talk about these because we want to be nice and a little bit sentimental um, and always honoring of Yaakov's wisdom. But I think his real wisdom is that he's not, these aren't just sweet blessings. They're really tough-minded evaluations. Mm. They're tough and they're pointing to areas where each of these sons need to improve. And you put this group of this group of, of, of people with these attributes together, and you've got a really crazy soup. And that, and if you look forward to so many, so many of our deeds, if you look even just as far as Shoftim, uh, you see so many of these harsher and more wonderful attributes coming out. Hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you. We have come we have come to the next presentation and the end of this one, but I I um I really encourage everyone to take a deeper look into this piece because there's so much that's here. It's like finding hidden gems in all corners. And um it's just tremendous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's been a pleasure.